We begin tonight's newscast with a major development in the local courts. A high court judge has frozen the assets of an attorney as part of a bid by a company to recover $7 million in funds paid to a contractor for a construction project that allegedly did not materialize. Delivering a decision this afternoon, High Court Judge Frank Sipisad upheld an ex parte application from Advance Hose and Marketing Limited to freeze an account held by attorney Varun Tebedin. In the court filings obtained by Guardian Media, the company's lawyer Karina Singh claimed that on July 19, 2023, her client transferred the money to contractor Cordell Filbert of Royal Palm Gardens, Malabar, Arima, as part of a, for a prospective construction project it was pursuing. Singh claimed that Filbert through fraudulent means, misappropriated and or converted the sum of $7 million to his own use and benefit. Singh also claimed that Philbert's financial records showed that after receiving the funds, $6 million was transferred to Davidine's account held with Scotiabank. Under Justice Sipasad's order, Davidine was barred from disposing of $6 million of his assets in the account the money was transferred to by Philbert and his other bank accounts. Davidine was also given three days in which to disclose records of all his local assets ex exceeding $1 million. The order which will remain in place until the defendants appear before Justice Sipasad next Wednesday does not stop Davidine from spending $10,000 of his funds on living expenses. The saga of the Point 14 Highway continues as the handling of the project by the former People's Partnership Administration has been referred to a Joint Select Committee of Parliament. In making the announcement today, the Prime Minister said the public still has many questions about why certain decisions were taken by the Kamla Prasad Bisasa led administration, as it allegedly led to the wastage of hundreds of millions of dollars. Akash Samru has more from the Prime Minister's statement. It's the largest contract ever awarded in this country's history. And despite not being in power for over eight years, the Prime Minister has no intention of letting Kamla Pasad Bisesa and her team off the hook for their handling of the Point Fortin Highway project. The question remains, Madam Speaker, why? The question sounds simple enough, but quite complex in this case. And while the context of the Point Fortin Highway threatens to be as long as the roadway itself, the question he's asking is why did the then partnership government, hours before being voted out of office, allegedly amend its agreement with then contractor OAS Constructura, which took away a clause that allowed this country to terminate its business with the Brazilian firm if it filed for bankruptcy, something that happened in March of that election year. This curious action, Madam Speaker, paved the way for the government of Trinidad and Tobago to stand to lose over $900 million in bonds. And the Prime Minister believes given the demand for transparency in this country, the UNC members allegedly involved still owe the people an explanation. Therefore, Dr. Rowley asked five questions. He wants to know the process behind removing the bankruptcy clause, who authorized it, what was the perceived benefit to be had, who actually carried out the instructions, and what were NIDCO and the Works and Transport Ministry's role in all of this. Furthermore, the Prime Minister announced that the Parliament will also seek its own answers, as the matter has been referred to a Joint Select Committee on land and physical infrastructure. These documents have been laid for the Committee on Land and Physical Infrastructure for urgent detailed examination. But immediately after his statement, the opposition had a question. Are you aware that a 15-member committee comprising PNM government officials met on May 20th, 2010, four days before general election, and recommended that the contract be awarded to OS, which had the lowest bid of $5.2 billion, and in addition, the very NIDCO board appointed by the then PNM government hosted NIDCO on the 25th of May 2010, hours after general election, to indicate that they were the preferred bidder of the People's National Movement oh government. My. The PM's response? Thou dost protest too much. Tell that to the Committee of Parliament. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News. Finance Minister Kom Imbert is tonight assuring public sector workers awaiting their back pay by Christmas that is guaranteed. Minister Imbert said the government will keep its commitment so long as the agencies benefiting from the $1 billion payout complete their part of the auditing process. Imbert adds that the Finance Ministry is prepared to offer assistance, including human resources, to aid in the exercise. So I am quite confident and once everybody pulls together, we will achieve the back pay promise that we made to pay these categories of workers, teachers, prison officers, fire officers, police officers, by December 2023. 
Noting that some people may receive their payments by November, Minister Imbert also shed light on which permanent secretary wrote to a minister saying back pay was not possible until next May. The Prime Minister was speaking about the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education and the minister was the Minister of Education and no permanent secretary in this Ministry of Finance would ever tell me that they are not going to make good on a commitment given in the annual budget. Well, on Friday, Dr. Rowley criticized the Public Service Commission for insubordinate state employees, where he reveals that a permanent secretary disobeyed the instruction to settle back pay by the end of the year. The protective services are tonight hopeful that they will receive their back pay in time for Christmas, following Finance Minister Cormimbert's promise that public sector workers will be ending the year on a high note. President of the Prison Officers Association, Jared Gordon, told CNC3 News Today that the government is not doing officers a favor by paying back pay. He said the officers were a bit perturbed by the announcement during the budget debate and concerned about misinformation being circulated in the media since, however, given Imbert's reiteration today, he said officers remain hopeful they will see this promise come to fruition. Meanwhile, Chief Fire Officer Arnold Bristow said the fire service was the last to sign off on the 4% increase so others will be in line to receive their back pay before them. However, he said they are doing all that's necessary to meet the requirements and once the money is there, he believes the government will pay officers what they are due. Similarly, head of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Social and Welfare Association, Gideon Dixon, says it is up to the TTPS's fin finance branch to do their part, but noted that he has confidence they will achieve it. During a media conference this afternoon, Imbert said the government will be doing its part to ensure all monies are paid, paid out as long as the relevant agencies complete their part of the auditing process. Still to come in the news, governments trying to avoid new electricity rates eroding the recently increased minimum wage. We'll tell you what they're suggesting. Fed up with paying bills and taxes, Kuva residents protest the proposed electricity rate hike. Coming up in sport, following Michelle Yee's Pan Am Games 100-meter bronze, Rhea Thomas reaches the 200-meter final. Let's continue to build with Bagwan Sings and Dan Steel. We are committed to providing quality products for all major building projects. Let's build together with rebars and beams, BRC coils and mats, RHS and angles, roofing sheets and purlins, lumber, plywood and MDF. Bagwan Sings and Dan Steel. Building homes, building communities, building TNT. Bagwan Sings and Dan Steel. Building value every day. Bumper traffic I am here, and I will definitely be late because I still have to pass by the ATM to get cash for you. So, see, no, 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 don't put you on that. You can pay with N Cash. So, just come straight here. Yeah. Ncash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use Ncash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on Ncash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Download the app and create your wallet today. The Police Service Commission wants more oversight over the TTPS. That's right, Rhea. In its 2022 report late in Parliament today, the Commission said it hasn't seen the reduction in crime that it and the country had hoped for. Among some of the Commission's requests are to also be able to monitor any person who is eligible to act in the top positions of the TTPS, namely Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner and Acting Commissioner. They also want to be consulted on the criteria for appointment to these offices. The PSC is also calling for the retirement age for the Office of Commissioner of Police to be extended from 60 to 65 years. According to the report, the, commissioner, the Commission believes extending the retirement age to 65 will allow for continuity of service since the Commissioner of Police must ascend through the ranks and given the current rate of promotions, a candidate would be in their mid to late 50s before being eligible for the top cop position.
Well, while the Prime Minister is calling on all state agencies to redouble their efforts to address crime, several senior police officers are being sent on extensive leave. In some cases, for as long as five years. One of the officers going on a lengthy vacation is Senior Superintendent Roger Alexander, who was sent on 773 days leave, inclusive of 561 vacation days. Police Commissioner Ola Herwood Christopher sanctioned the leave for the officers, while earlier this year, restricting leave and requiring calling some officers to bolster the strength of the TTPS as it increased patrols to address crime. In a response to the Prime Minister, President of the Police Social and Welfare Association, Gideon Dixon said, the call by the Prime Minister was a clarion call for all aspects of society to come out of their silos and address crime collectively. The recent minimum wage increase should not be diminished by the proposed electricity rates. That's according to Finance Minister Carl Mimbert, who was asked to respond to concerns about minimum wage earners spending their salary increase on a higher, electri higher electricity rate. Reminding that Cabinet has yet to make a decision on the submitted proposal by the Regulated Industries Commission, which calculated the new rates, Imbert says government has a measure in place to mitigate this problem. It takes the form of a rebate. If your electricity bill is $300 or less, you get a substantial rebate on the bill so that your bill could be reduced from $300 to maybe $225 or something like that. Your minimum wage owner is going to fall into that category because the vast majority of households in Trinidad and Tobago, their bill is in that region. He adds that government can potentially tweak the rebate scheme for people at the lowest end of the spectrum by either removing the increase altogether or applying a marginal increase to that cohort. The Regulated Industries Commission wants the population to know that they had no choice when it comes to the timing of the rate increase. The RIC recently recommended to TNTEC that electricity bills go up between 15 to 64 percent. Speaking on CNC 3's The Morning Brew program on Wednesday, Executive Director Michelle Salandi said, The Commission understands that many are struggling after the pandemic and that did impact their decision. By the Act, we are mandated to basically carry out our rate reviews. Mm. In order to do so, we must have the right information coming to us. And once that's complete, we have to continue with our process. But just to add to that, we did understand, and I mean, I know the technical team, the Board of Commissioners, did understand the time, you know, come, as you're saying, coming out of COVID, um, downturn in economy, different things were happening at the time. Salandi said they widened the tears to allow people to get more usage and stay within the lower levels of consumption. She added that the RIC looked at the average usage and most customers will remain in the second tier. And with the Christmas season around the corner, RIC chairman Dawn Callender said there are strategies to conserve electricity. Maybe you love Christmas and maybe you want to keep on your Christmas tree, but where can you save at the same time? Perhaps some of the lights, we leave rooms, we leave one light in them. So during that period, you may want to be more deliberate in taking off some lights. You may want to use a fan. You know, we always say that December, the temperature seems to be cooler. Calendar said customers will have to deliberately consider how they can save on their electricity bills. Some residents of Kufa and Environs are opposed to the proposed electricity rate increase. About 20 residents demonstrated this morning, saying they cannot afford any more increases in the cost of living. The demonstration started at Roops Junction and ended at... TNTEC's central office, Kuva South Member of Parliament, Rudranath Indarsing, says people are fed up of paying bills, taxes and increased rates while their spending power is being reduced daily. He said the government has a moral duty to reject the rate increases because it would lead to further hardships to the ordinary people of this country. We are saying to the government they have a moral duty and responsibility to roll back or reject the recommendation of the RIC to further impoverish the poor people, the marginal people, the vulnerable people, the pensioners, the single mothers. Meanwhile, resident Sharma Suknanan fears that the increase will affect the costs of goods and services. The, the business people, when the rates go up, they pass it on to the normal people. The, the, cost, the consumer have to pay. 
for the increase in electricity rates. So we are here to show, to make a statement. Well, also taking part in the protest this morning was UNC Councillor for Savanetta Point Lisa's Ramchan Rajpal Maraj. The findings of the investigation into the recent death of Wasa worker Kun Etienne will be made public. Public Utilities Minister Marvin Gonzalez made this announcement in the Parliament this afternoon but refused to answer any questions on the incident given the ongoing probe. Etienne was buried alive while on duty on October 22nd. An autopsy showed that his spine broke in several places. Both Wasa and OSHA are investigating the incident. Minister Gonzalez assured that if any negligence is found on Wasa's part, then they will be held to account. A woman who pretended to collect cash payments for insurance policies has been charged with fraud. 32-year-old Diane Morales of Princess Town has been granted $80,000 bail. A woman allegedly paid over $8,000 to an insurance agent in 2022 towards her insurance policies. She paid another $6,400 to the agent for the same purpose, but soon learned that the money was never paid on her behalf, causing her policies to lapse. Turns out the woman was no longer employed as an insurance agent and was no longer authorized to collect money on the company's behalf. After the victim failed to secure a refund from the former insurance agency, she reported the matter to the police. The suspect was arrested and charged with 11 counts of fraud and 9 counts of obtaining money by false pretenses. Members of the Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce are praising the Port Authority and Caribbean Airlines for their seamless operations during the Tobago Carnival. At a media conference this morning, head of the Inter-Island Transportation Committee, Demi Cruikshank, and chairman of the chamber, Curtis Williams, said there were no reports of congestion at any of Tobago's ports. We did not hear at any point in time that you had a, a backlog on the ports. Uh, both Trinidad and people returning from the carnival. And I think that is, is historic in terms of this, uh, this carnival and even on the island in a whole. The chamber hopes this outcome will be the same for all other festivals on the island. Caribbean Airlines reported that nearly 5,000 out of the over 14,000 seats allocated for the Tobago Carnival were unoccupied. In the release today, Cal's Chief Executive Officer Gavin Madeira highlighted the importance of the domestic air bridge and expressed satisfaction with the customer feedback. He said extra flights were scheduled to meet demand and Cal's operations focused on efficient management and high-quality service. He explained the airline achieved an on-time performance of over 87% surpassing the industry standard. Cal operated 184 return flights during the October 26th to the 30th period. The finance minister has ordered the central bank to probe the price mark credit card incident that left customers incurring unknown charges to their accounts last month. Minister Embert says while the government will not get involved further, he has asked the central bank governor to submit a report on its investigation and state what was done to correct the problem. On October 16th, customers complained of charges after being notified by their respective banks. Republic Bank has since taken accountability for the incident and has promised to ensure that Affected, in, affected individuals are fully reimbursed. In tonight's Business Watch, the recently appointed president of Guardian Asset Management is seeing positive investment trends developing across the Caribbean. Also, the Guaymi Energy Alliance Credit Union is also hoping to build on its momentum following multiple awards at the recent Credit Union Awards. Peter Christopher has the details. Recently appointed President of Guardian Asset Management, Miguel Martinez, believes the Caribbean is trending in a positive direction with regard to investment. In an interview with Business Watch, Martinez notes that there has been increased investment across Caribbean countries, which bodes well for economic growth and development. He especially hails moves made to cross-list various entities on regional stock markets. It's an opportunity for Trinidad entities to either list and cross-list in Jamaica, um, broaden, essentially, I would say, the, the, you know, the breadth of investors that, that, I would say, have access to their IPOs or to their APOs. Um, so I think it, in, in general and in broad terms, it's a fantastic opportunity for, I would say, widening the capital markets um, and creating more partnership between our CARICOM members. He, however, notes that the Caribbean is still very much risk-averse in its investment approach, but he believes this may change over time. 
As our knowledge and understanding of, of the markets deepen, and, we, and investors get a, a better appreciation, um, and there's more companies list on the stock exchange, um, you would find, I would say, households participating more and eventually over time, you know, taking on more risk um, compared to some of the developed markets. The Guaymi Energy Alliance Credit Union is hoping to build on its recent accolades at the annual awards of the Credit Union League of Trinidad and Tobago. The Miaro based Credit Union won three awards, including Most Outstanding Credit Union, at the event two weeks ago. President Marvin Duram explains that the credit union has consistently been named among the best performing credit unions over the last decade. From 2014 to present, we have continuously achieved the award of um, best financial performance. Right? And this is from the Credit Union League of Trade and Tobago. In 2014, we have also copped the award of best credit union or most outstanding credit union, and we also returned um, in terms of doing that this year again in 2023, where we also cut the award of best performing credit union. These achievements are impressive considering the fact that the credit union decided to push towards national coverage in 2015. And Durham says the credit union hopes to build on its 8,000 strong membership further. And now for a look at today's energy and foreign exchange prices. Christopher, CNC3 Business Watch. We're still to come in the news tonight. Two Mayaro beach houses are at risk of destruction from coastal erosion. The council is calling on the works minister to help save them. Mostly hot and sunny conditions across Trinidad and Tobago today. We saw some partly cloudy skies develop during the afternoon. Lots of our showers remaining offshore. Now widely scattered cloudy activity to our east, all associated with an increase in moisture due to an induced low level trough that will be approaching the area and affecting the windwards as we head into the weekend. I'll have the details on that and much more just after the break. Christmas is on us. A season of giveaways, covering your holidays. Home makeovers been with ease, cash tech and groceries. This Christmas will treat a new price. Sign up for an everything plan or pay your bill in full for chances to win over $1 million in cash and prizes. Visit us in store or online at discoverflow.co for more details. Perfection doesn't happen by chance. Like an artist, the cook selects the main ingredient. One that is worthy of a proud cultural tradition. Trusted to enhance your creations with its richness and versatility. To create a cooking masterpiece, the secret is simple. The brand we know, the brand we trust, the brand our ancestors have been using for generations. Cow Brand Green. Look for the can with the cow. of the deals bring victory over darkness into your life. Happy Diwali to all. A message from Kaleidoscope Paints Limited. Shub Diwali from Southern Food Basket. Split peas, two pounds for $7.95. Potatoes, buy 10 pounds, get five pounds free. Extra large shana, two pounds for $17.95. Sultanas, 400 gram for $7.95. Deers, two dozens for $13.95. Eastern brand coconut oil, 700 ml, two for $34.95. Golden brand margarine, three for $16.95. Country pride all purpose flour, two kg, two for $28.95. Eve condensed milk, $3.95. Gram three for twenty two ninety five Nabisco cream of wheat three forty gram for thirty three ninety five Rich Port oil three liter for forty seven ninety five Easy Wrap foil twenty five feet two for nineteen ninety five Shop the best for less Diwali specials at Southern Food Basket Coffee Street San Fernando SS Erin Road Pinal St Charles Village Princess Town and Southern Main Road Point Fourteen.
Welcome back. There is a new vaccine in the country. In fact, Ria, TNT is the first in the Caribbean region to get its hands on the new vaccine to prevent shingles, a disease caused by the same virus that causes chicken pox. In tonight's Wellness Wednesday, we hear from a team of international doctors on when the vaccines will be made available to the public and learn some facts about shingles. Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by BioStrat. Get what you need naturally. We've all heard of shingles, also known as herpes zoster, but what exactly is this disease? So if you're like myself who had chicken pox as a child, the virus remains in the body. The body has a way of fighting the virus and keeps it down. So after chicken pox, it still stays back in the body. As you grow older, especially at the age of 50, the risk for the reactivation of this virus increases. And with this reactivation, the shingles disease manifests itself, affecting at least one in three people globally during their lifetime. And while it manifests itself in various ways, the disease is well known for causing a painful rash on your skin, which could last for as long as 90 days and in some cases several years. And even if you have never contracted chickenpox, you may still be prone to contracting shingles, especially if you're immunocompromised just by touching someone who may have a rash. With shingles, precautions and hand washing is important. Um, but that does not mean that individuals who've had chicken pox in the past who already have the virus, that if I have shingles and I touch you, I can give you shingles necessarily. So it's not as contagious as chicken pox. But to be safe, experts suggest that people over the age of 50 and immunocompromised patients as young as 18 should get the vaccine which has already been evaluated with an efficacy rate that surpassed 90 percent with various groups. The vaccines, it was approved by the, by the FDA in 2017. Therefore, we have at least six years of, of, of using this vaccine in, in other geographical settings such as US and also in, in, in European countries and, and also in, in other countries in, in emerging market. The vaccine will be made available in various private vaccination centers and doctor's offices across the country. And for those of you who may have doubts about vaccination... It's very important when people are searching for information for any vaccine, for any medicine, to see the appropriate, uh, uh, the appropriate uh, sources of information. Social media, many times, they may give uh, misinformation. Melissa Williams Zambrano, CNC3 News. Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by BioStrat. Get what you need naturally. The chairman of the Mayaro Rio Claro Regional Corporation, Raymond Cozier, is calling on the Works and Transport Minister, Rohan Seninan, to help two residents save their homes. The structures are in danger of coastal erosion. The chairman asked the ministry to assist the families when contractors resume repairs to the seawall meters away. CNC3, speaking with CNC3 News, Cozier said even though the beach is not under the corporation's remit, they do what they can to help. But this project, he says, will require the ministry's immediate attention, especially since they have seen a family lose everything to coastal erosion. We are here this morning to uh, highlight what is happening with this home. And we are extremely concerned because of the fact not too far off from here, we had the same situation and the family lost their, 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 they lost their home. So, Minister, Minister Rohan Sinanan, we are asking you on behalf of the residents of Guayaguayari. Resident Rani Sanka said the situation has been worsening. Right, so the house going. That's this week, the street fall long. And all day they did good this week, last week and this week. And more the tide get more worse, there's more it just stuff it by hit inside of me. When it when the tide breaks, the sprinklers hit all on the wall. Sometimes you're free when you're sleeping. Well CNC3 News tried reaching out to Minister Sinanan for comment, but our messages went unanswered. <laughs> It's now time for the weather forecast with Colleen, Colleen Hussein. Uh, we may have some welcome rain 
in the forecast, right. but yep. an unwelcome visitor this weekend. Well, the potential is there for hail, wow. uh, specifically Friday into Saturday, and the highest chances of it will actually occur offshore. For those in Grenada, they might see some strong thunderstorms as well. That could produce that kind of activity. For us in Trinidad and Tobago, though, some strong thunderstorms are also forecast. So let's go take a look at what's going on in the Atlantic and the Caribbean Sea. First off, we're starting off with this tropical disturbance we've been monitoring for the last couple of days. Chances are decreasing, still has the potential to bring some heavy rainfall to parts of Central America, the National Hurricane Center, giving it a 40% chance of development over the next seven days. And you can see a lot of scattered showers and thunderstorms near Jamaica, but it's really this feature just on the edge of your screen that we're watching. This is a low level trough, an area of lower than usual pressure that brings some disturbed weather to Trinidad and Tobago year round, but especially in November into December when it interacts with the intertropical convergence zone. That's when we could see some problems in this it's forecast to move across the Windward Islands by uh, Thursday, that's tomorrow, through Friday, and then trailing convergence into Saturday. You also have favorable upper-level conditions, which will enhance shower and thunderstorm activity, but we'll also have strong wind shear from the west that will keep a lot of the heavy rainfall offshore, eastern and northern Trinidad still. Looking out for quite a bit of rain starting tomorrow, but for tonight, generally settled conditions across the country. Looking out for some isolated showers and even the odd thunderstorm across southeastern parts of Trinidad are minimum lows between 24 and 26 degrees across the country for tomorrow. Starting off with some sunshine and that maximum high temperature getting up to around 33 degrees Celsius but by the late morning through the afternoon we'll be seeing some increased showers and thunderstorms across both islands generally favoring hilly and western areas of both Trinidad and Tobago. We could see some localized street or flash flooding in that heavier shower or thunderstorm as well as gusty winds up to 50 kilometers per hour. So when thunder roars, go indoors and watch out for those heavy showers causing uh, that street and flash flooding. Do not venture into flood waters as well. Looking at our seas, seas right now continue to remain slight to moderate. Waves up to 1.5 meters in open waters, less than one meter in sheltered areas. Spring tides have ended, but it could get some choppy conditions out in our open oceans, especially in the vicinity of heavy showers and thunderstorms. Looking at our extended weather forecast, well, the highest chances for rainfall Friday into Saturday, and we'll see some settling by Sunday, but Monday that rainfall is set to return. Over the next five days, we're looking out anywhere between 35 and 80 millimeters of rain falling across the country. That amount of rain in a short period of time could cause some street or flash flooding threat. We'll be watching that closely as we progress into the weekend. All right, thank you so much, Colleen. Um, let's tell you what's still to come in the news. Following reports of attacks to Hindu temples and festivals, the SDMS is calling for a multi-religious meeting. Unlock your mind's incredible capacity like never before. Introducing Advances Smart Plus, the groundbreaking solution that over time can help supercharge your memory, concentration, and unleash your mental performance. Our cutting-edge formula features an unparalleled blend of 13 clinically researched natural ingredients, selected for its proven ability to work synergistically to help optimize brain function. Feel the difference now with Advances Smart Plus. Available at leading pharmacies and Pennywise Nationwide. The biggest Christmas sale is at CV Optical. Get an amazing 60% off designer frames. Also, get 40% off prescription lenses. Plus, you get a free pair of Polaroid sunglasses on selected purchases. See us today at CV Optical, affordable eye care for everyone. It's Bright Ideas Festival of Discount Sale. Illuminate your home with up to 75% off selected items. Enjoy unbeatable deals. 10 to 30% off ornaments. 30% off selected linens and curtains. 25 to 50% off selected flowers. 25% off lamps, clocks, and mirrors. 25% off as seen on TV items. 50% off paintings. 30% off selected bakeware, dinner sets, and kitchenware. 25 to 50% off religious ornaments. 75% off lights and chandeliers. But hurry, the Festival of Discount Sale is here for a limited time only. Bright Ideas, located at Point Fortin, Princess Town, Rio Claro, Maribel, or Gulf City Mall, and coming soon to Curep. Bright Ideas, bringing happiness home. Come to Homeland Marketing and discover our wonderful wrought iron designs, gates, tracks and guides, wheels, zinc hollow section, Makita tools and primer. Number 44 Montrose Main Road, Chagonas. Three buildings after the Chagonas Medical Center heading east. Homeland Marketing, beautifying homes. is reliable, credible, and authentic. 
Thank you for trusting me to bring you the news. It's a privilege to be in your homes and hearts. With every story and every newscast, CNC3 is keeping you informed and inspired. When it comes to news, we are where you are. prominent attorney is calling out the Attorney General on what he considers a chilling development that could silence potential litigants in constitutional matters against the state. Prakash Ramada wants the Attorney General to say who gave instructions for the state to pursue costs against his client, a retired police officer. In a constitutional motion for non-payment of his gratuity and pension, Ramada says as a result of a court of appeal ruling, they withdrew the motion and filed it as a breach of contract. But he says in a shocking move, the state asked for costs. Fortunately, he says their request was not granted. Ramada explains that his client is experiencing dire financial hardships and suffers from severe health complications, including being partially blind, suffers from renal failure and suffered a stroke. It is a huge issue that if the message is to be sent, that if you are to go against the state for what you consider to be a legitimate claim and for whatever reason you are unsuccessful, the state will come after you with costs. Then it will have a chilling effect on the rights of each and every one of us, at least in the exercise of those rights that require litigation. Well, 50 year old Bisundath. Samaru, who retired as medically unfit in 2020, broke down in tears at Ramada's office in San Fernando. He says he also has to care for his partially paralyzed wife. It's really tough. You know, <laughs> it felt as though, like, the state had turned its back on me. It, it affected me physically, mentally, all how. And it's only that during this period that I've been going through this, that even somewhere that even some relief, um, financial relief could have been given. Well, Samaru's breach of contract matter was filed in June and the state was granted two exten extensions to file its defense. The deadline is Friday. As the murder toll continues to climb in the lead up to the Christmas season, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley met with all arms of the Protective Services on Monday. So we ask you, are you confident that the authorities can curb the upsurge in murders before the end of the year? Is what you had to say. No, not with the current laws that they have and not with the current uh, people that they have in power. Right? It's not going to work out. I don't believe so. I believe it's the, it's the, the mindset of the people because the good book tells you that man become lovers of themselves and they don't have love in this world and they so find that it's very difficult. I believe no government or anybody could handle this situation because it's tough. No, nope. no, nope. because too much, too much and they're going back and forth. Uh, opposition and government. Back and forth, back and forth, and like they know what they're doing. No. Why? Because what's more years pass and they're controlling it and now coming on to the holidays. It had their jobs and they had they doing anything. You understand? So uh, possible no. Uh, no doubt about that. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Why? I don't think so. Why? Crime is every day and everybody get fed up of it. That can't be to the end of the year. Contain the upsurge. Girl, they lost control. I think the government and the Minister of National Security's Christmas wish should be to get something to control this crime. Because honestly, I think we have lost all control with these criminals. It's too difficult. It's too difficult. People from children from young ages growing up and they're doing also a crime, so how they could ever do better. It's hard. Some interesting views there, Ria. Mm -hmm. Let's hand over now to Jassi Marik to see what's coming up in sport. Jassi, what do you have for us? Hopefully good news for some young under-20 players as former strike squad player Brian Haynes is appointed as the men's under-20 national team head coach. 
And Quinton de Kock's World Cup run scoring form spurs South Africa to another comfortable win. We'll have some of those highlights after this break. Since they were on sale, Laura bought these umbrella shoes without thinking. Literally, without thinking. Hungry for deals? You'd better come and satisfy it at KFC before doing something crazy. Wow Bucket, seven pieces of chicken and four regular sides for $150. A finger licking good deal. It's D-Best pre-Christmas sale. Start your Christmas shopping at dbesttoys.com now and save big. Shop gifts for the entire family all in one place. Get huge discounts on brand name toys and baby items. From action figures, arts and crafts, bicycles, tricycles, scooters and skateboards, tablets and Amazon buy sticks, building blocks, cars, trucks and remote control vehicles. Visit our store locations at Mackin Cuba, Movitown Quarter, Spain and East Gate Mall, Trinity. Avoid the Christmas rush and get the first pick of D-Best toys at D-Best price. Hi, Walter. Is the family coming for Christmas? Every single one of them. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. Where's your husband? Ex-husband. Oh. Hey, Rachel. You know he's single. Okay, Mama. If I close my eyes, I can see Mom in here like it was yesterday. She is here. She's in every pot, in every pan. We are standing on holy ground. Hallelujah! We're not going to make it to Christmas, are we? Not a damn chance. Welcome back. It's time for sport. Former Trinidad and Tobago Red Force captain Nicholas Puran is back in the team for the remainder of this year's CG United Super 50 tournament. The left-hander, who initially made himself unavailable for the competition, has had a change of heart following a tournament-ending injury to fellow left-hander Evan Lewis. Now, coach of the team David Furlong says Puran, who captained the squad last year, is in real contention to fight into the, or rather, to fit right into the playing eleven for tomorrow's clash between the unbeaten Red Force and the so far winless defending champions Jamaica Scorpions. That match is at the Queen's Park Oval from 9 a.m. He has been training, he has been practicing with our, our reserve team players at the Cricket Centre on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays. So he has been training, um, he has been batting. So it's not that, you know, like, like he was serious, you know, at home. He, you know, he, he was involved in, in training and practicing. Now, with Puran, who is a middle-order batsman, replacing an opener, Furlong says, there will be a shifting around necessary in order to accommodate the in-form batsman that's coming in. Staying with cricket, the West Indies Academy team turned back Guyana Harpy Eagles in Wednesday's lone regional Super 50 clash. Showing resilience to get to a decent total, the Academy boys then showed even greater fight to defend it at the Sir Frank Warrell ground in St. Augustine. The academy was brave, choosing to bat first against the Harpy Eagles from Guyana, but sometimes bravado is simply bad. And that is out. Third ball of the innings, Kimani Melias for no score, and on the very next delivery, Leonardo Julian had a golden duck. But a fairly productive reconstruction was then carried out by Matthew Nandu and Teddy Bishop. Bishop was caught at slip for then top score, 48, the academy, 84 for four. They continued to score at a healthy rate, but those two wickets gave Guyana momentum. To their credit, though, the Young Windies found another good partnership of 59 between skipper Naeem Young and Matthew Ford. After Young departed for 42, Ford carried on to 52, and Joshua Bishop's 37 from 23 added further spark to get the academy to 263 all out from 50 overs. Guyana's approach was to attack through openers Kevlon Anderson and Chandra Paul Hemraj. On course to bring up the 50 in just eight overs, Young found Hemraj's leading edge, though on 16, 45 for one. The Eagles did get to 50 in that over, but it came with a second wicket, Shimron Hetmeyer for five. In his next over, Young removed Anderson as well for 27, and losing a fourth wicket before even getting close to 100, the Eagles were soon 69 for four. And soon the Harpy Eagles were bowled out for 171 in the 36th over, losing to the West Indies Academy by 92 runs. That's the end of the well, let's bring you up to speed on what's happening in Chile. Trinidad and Tobago will again have two athletes in a sprint final at the 2023 Pan American Games, where at those games, the Team TTO's hockey team, the hockey men in particular, they put up a valiant fight against Mexico. 
Getting off to a really good start is the Brazilian De Jesus, who looks to be coming through the bend very comfortably indeed. Tamayo comes into her own now. Running in the women's 200 meters, Rhea Thomas in lane eight was attempting to make her second sprint final at the games. Thomas was an automatic qualifier, finishing in a time of 23.76. In lane six in men's 200 meter heat two, Kyle Grew had a tougher assignment. Up to automatically qualify, remember, nothing really separating the top four. Robinson coming into his own, so too is Zagro, but man pulling away eventually is Palacios, who'll take it ahead of Robinson. Grew finished third, but will move into tomorrow's final as well. Titio's Calypso Stickman fought but fell at the end of a seesaw 5-8 playoff against Mexico. After taking a first quarter lead, Titio found themselves heading into the third quarter behind 2-1. Tariq Makano put them back in contention from the penalty corner. Miguel Pierre started the next penalty corner and finished it to put TNT back in the lead. The Mexicans pulled one back in the fourth quarter to force the classification match into penalties with a three-all full-time score. TTO's four shooters weren't able to beat the Mexican keeper. Despite Andre Rock's best efforts in the TTO goal, the Mexicans breached his defenses twice to take a 2-0 win in the shootout. Jovan Ravello, CNC3 Sport. Staying at the Games, Michelle Liaí captured Trinidad and Tobago's fourth medal at the ongoing Pan American Games last night, winning bronze in the women's 100-meter final. Starting from lane two, Aí finished in 11.53 seconds. Her compatriot, Rhea Thomas, who just moved into the 200-meter final, she placed sixth in 11.69 from lane eight. Here's that race. <laughs> Getting away really well going in lane three is De Jesus, but getting into a stride is Ai. Garcia looks really good in lane six for Cuba, and Garcia is leading the way. She's going ahead of everybody else. Ai and uh, the battle for the silver. Ai takes the bronze, but it is a glorious goal for Garcia. Eunice Lady Garcia in 11.37 is your champion in the women's 100 meters. Pan and bronze to go with her 2019 silver, not bad at all from Michelle Liaí. Now, the door has been shut on TNT's progression to the 2024 Women's CONCACAF Gold Cup after their nil-nil draw against Puerto Rico in last evening's qualifying fixture. As it stands, the, Soko, the women's Soko Warriors lie third in their group with one point from three matches, three points behind the Puerto Ricans with just one match remaining in group play. Even with a win against our next opponents, Mexico, and presuming the Mexican also beat Puerto Rico. Trinidad and Tobago can only finish level on points with Puerto Rico and unfortunately the tiebreaker will be the head-to-head -head record. Still though, there was reason to look forward ahead according to head coach Richard Hood. You know, training doesn't necessarily prepare you for the actual you know the, the the actual game in terms of you know the intensity and the moment you know playing at at international level and again we have to remember that these girls are very young uh, in their careers really you know um, so I, I I was pretty happy with what we did tonight and again incremental improvements. Let's stay with national team football. Newly appointed men's under twenty football coach Brian Haynes says. He's always had a passion to work with players at this age group. The appointment was announced today by the TTFA, and in an interview with the TTFA's media officer, Sean Fuentes, Haynes, who resides in the United States of America, expressed his eagerness to come home to this opportunity. For me, I don't want to look for another Eddie Johnson. No, what I'm looking for is the next trainer that who wants to make an impact, not just in his local community, but for the country itself. Look, as far as I'm concerned, I will always be a Trinidad. And um, I just want to find, not one, I want to find a group of players. Now here's where that passion came from. Haynes, who scored eight goals for the strike squad in 21 appearances between 1987 and 1996, is hoping to add some more quality to the senior team by scouting and recruiting players with Trinbegonian roots playing abroad. Sticking with football, Bishops High from Tobago and Trinity College East played to a stalemate in a rescheduled SSFL Premiership game yesterday. Although already relegated, the Tobago team still did well to claim a point from the encounter played at Plymouth Recreation Ground. Tobago's carnival subsided, allowing a return of SSFL action to the island with two games on Tuesday. In Plymouth, the visiting Trinity East sought an early go-ahead, but Soretsi Brown lacked control. They may have been relishing meeting the already relegated Bago boys, but found them a tough nut to crack. Bishops have struggled to score, with just seven goals all season. However, in the 31st, Demario Henry gave them the lead, 1-0. 
It lasted eight minutes. The shop's keeper, Christian McKechnie, gave Deshaun Plaza an invitation to put the visitors back level. In the second half, Trinity came back with the same energy. They'd have to wait until the 79th to find their second. A couple deft first touches set Kaleem Prince free, and he was decisive. 2-1 Trinity East. Confidence brimming, he showed a line of Bishop's defenders a clean pair of heels, only to be denied by McKechnie. And at the other end, an exuberant piece of defending gave Bishops a way back in from 12 yards. Kitsunato tied things up again with one minute remaining. And Bishops weathered a late storm to hold on to their fourth point of the season. In the other postponed Tobago fixture, Speyside also drew two all with Queen's Royal College at Speyside. The results mean no changes to the SSFL table with champions Fatima College at the summit, Speyside 10th, Trinity East 12th, QRC 13th and Bishops 15th. Joe Van Ravello, CNC3 Sport. All right, now for some international news. We have some World Cup action, some tennis and basketball. South Africa tops the table at the ICC World Cup after a 190-run win against New Zealand today. Quinton de Kock led with his fourth century of the tournament. He made 114. Still, though, it was only a supporting knock to the player of the match, Rassi van der Dusen's 133, as South Africa posted 357 for four wickets from 50 overs. In defense of that, Proteus spinner Keshav Maharaj claimed four wickets for 46 runs as the Black Caps were bowled out for 167 in 35.3 overs. To tennis, Jessica Pegula won in straight sets against Arena Sabalenka to move into the semi-final of the WTA Finals competition in Cancun, Mexico. Pegula closed out her seventh match point to advance with a 6-4, 6-3 win. And now to basketball, the San Antonio Spurs snatched a 115-114 to win over the Phoenix Suns last night, a win that was powered by Spurs forward Keldon Johnson, who led all scorers with 27 points. Victor Wembanyama and Devin Vassell each scored 18. The LA Clippers were also victorious, 118-102 to against the Orlando Magic. Paul George's 27 led all scorers in that game. PG also had 7 rebounds and 7 assists. Well, for our sport high tonight, we head to the EFL Cup where Liverpool ousted Bournemouth. Sport high, brought to you by Supplegen. Boost you up. The Reds and the Cherries levelled at one apiece, but here came Darwin Nunes with the spectacular. The Uruguayan put his South American flair on this shot that turned out to be the winner for Liverpool to progress to the next round. So Nunes, for that goal, you earn tonight CNC3. Sports High. Sport High, brought to you by Supplegen. Boost you up. All right, congratulations in order for Michelle Yeyi for winning her bronze in yeah. this year's games. Yeah, um, her second bronze, uh, her second medal overall at the Pan Ams. She won silver in 2019, so she's showing no signs of deterioration at all. And hopefully our medal tally comes, keeps going up the table. Hopefully, we have two more finalists in the sprints, and we wish them all the best. Let's go TNT. Yeah, all right, thank you so much, Jassy. Let's take a break, we'll be right back. Imagine a much-needed rest, sun, and sand. Let Supplegen make it happen. Win an all-inclusive trip for two to beautiful Montego Bay, Jamaica. Spend $25 or more in Supplegen products. Write your name and contact at the back of your bill and place it in the entry form box. Enter online via WooBox.com. Other prizes include over $6,000 in grocery vouchers. Promotion runs up to a 1st to November 30th and is an LCD approved. Supplegen boost you up. Climate change is the threat of our lifetime. Generations before having failed to control the problem, we are disproportionately feeling the impacts, threatening our very existence with rising sea levels, extreme weather events, and hotter temperatures. I'll keep using my voice and stories I produce to amplify the impacts we face to an international stage and highlight solutions to advocate for climate action so that we can win in the global fight against this existential crisis. We are where you are. Volleyball 
filmmakers, producers, content creators, influencers, and recording artists. If you're looking to rent a versatile studio space with green screen, video wall, cyclorama, and more, look no further. GM Labs is here to make your dreams a reality. Located in the heart of Port of Spain on St. Vincent Street, GM Labs is your one-stop shop for all your creative needs with over 2,800 square feet to work with. Take your creative concept to the final product at GM Labs. Give us a call or WhatsApp or message us on our Instagram and Facebook pages at GM Labs TT. The Pandit's Parishad of the SDMS is calling on religious leaders of all faiths to meet and discuss measures to protect Hindu places of worship. In a statement today, the Sanatan Dharma Mahasabha said pundits and worshippers should feel safe to attend their churches, temples and mosques and not be subjected to abuse, hatred and intolerance. They also lamented any attempt by any arm of the state to trivialize their concerns. The pundits hopes to have this meeting after Diwali, which is on November 12th and also suggested the establishment of a religious freedom committee, which it says will monitor and produce reports, promote unity and harmony, contribute towards maintaining peace and stability in society. There will be no end, no fireworks to end the Diwali Nagar festivities this year. Deo Rup Timal, president of the National Council for Indian Culture, says people have not been enjoying the display as intended. It's why the council has taken the decision to skip a fireworks show for yet another year. However, all hope is not lost as the NCIC is exploring an alternative. Based on the reports that we get every year after the fireworks when we had it, there were fairly negative re reports impacting on animals, the elderly. So we are looking at it um, down the road. We are exploring options of um, the noiseless fireworks, which I think is still a bit noisy, but we are looking at that. Timal, who is also an independent senator, says they're also considering a light show in the coming years, but admitted this is an expensive venture. This year, the NCIC received $500,000 in funding from the state for its Diwali calendar if events. Timal says they've received that amount in the years gone by. The governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands declared a state of emergency after officials revealed last week that tap water in St. Croix contained lead and copper and warned people not to consume it. That's right, Ria. The declaration signed by Governor Albert Bryan frees up urgently needed resources, streamlines emergency response and allows the U.S. territory to seek federal help. The government also froze prices for bottled water and other products as local and federal authorities continue to test and monitor for the water in in St. Croix. The investigation began in late September following complaints of reddish brown water on the island of more than 50,000 people. Officials have said that while the water should not be ingested or used for cooking, it is safe to use for showering and cleaning. While well, the grip artificial intelligence has gained over humanity in 2023, has made AI the word of the year in the Collins Dictionary. Ryan. I've been using it quite a lot myself. The publisher said use of the term has quadrupled this year. Other contenders range from ultra-processed to ULES. But Collins Managing Director Alex Beecroft said AI had been the talking point of 2023. He said that AI has been a big focus this year in the way that it has developed and has quickly become as you ubiquitous and embedded in our lives as email, streaming, or any other once futuristic, now everyday technology. <laughs> it's time to recap our headlines. The Prime Minister announces a GSC to look into the management of the Point Fortin Highway by the People's Partnership. Attorney's assets frozen as company seeks to recover some $6 million from contractor. In sport, with Evan Lewis injured out, Nicholas Puran could slot right in for the Red Force against Jamaica in the morning. A mostly hot and sunny start with afternoon showers and thunderstorms moving in. We've come to the end of the 7 p.m. news on CNC3. Thanks for watching. I'm Ria Rambali. I'm Ryan Beichu. I am Jassy Marik. And I'm Colleen Hussain. Have a good night.
You're watching CNC3.